The Walt Disney World Resort, it's Disneyland's younger and bigger brother. Sometimes lauded for its size, its selection of resorts and dining locations, it's other times criticized. Favoring resort hotel guests over people like annual pass holders, being incredibly spread out and sometimes, for newcomers, difficult to navigate. Fifty years ago today, Walt Disney World opened to the public. And when I say Walt Disney World, I mean mainly the Magic Kingdom, the Contemporary Resort, the Polynesian Village Resort, and the crown jewel of all of them, Blackbeard's Island. You know, something that would eventually become known as Discovery Island, huh? And today I've taken it upon myself to walk in the footsteps of those intrepid few who made it to Walt Disney World on October 1st, 1971. But before experiencing it today and how it will be in the future, potentially, I feel like we should go back in time and explore some of the hiccups, problems, but also the successes, the things that happened, the magical events that took place at Walt Disney World on opening day. And here it is for all of you, the offhand Disney, Walt Disney World 50th anniversary special, celebrating 50 years of Walt Disney World. What we know today as the Walt Disney World Resort began, once upon a time, as something known as the Florida Project. A plan dreamed up by Walt Disney himself. A plan that included, yes, another Disneyland-style park, but also Epcot. We know what our goals are. We know what we hope to accomplish. And believe me, it's the most exciting and challenging assignment we've ever tackled at Walt Disney Productions. But the most exciting the far the most important part of our Florida project. In fact, the heart of everything we'll be doing in Disney World will be our experimental prototype city of tomorrow. We call it Epcot, spelled E-P-C-O-T. We know it today as the best park at the Walt Disney World Resort, but back in those days, Epcot was supposed to be a fully functioning city of the future. With a massive city center downtown area in the middle and the further out you went, residential and schooling areas. Disney began buying up a lot of real estate in central Florida, near the town of Orlando. Walt didn't like how immediately outside of Disneyland had become commercialized, with cheap hotel chains and restaurants popping up to capitalize on the success of his park. And so Walt made sure that Disney World had enough of a buffer zone between it and the outside world. When you left the new Disneyland park, you wouldn't be walking out into the city of Anaheim, you would be walking out into a well-controlled and maintained property that kept the Disney feel alive, even if it wasn't a fully functioning, you know, theme park resort, more of a city of the future with a Disneyland park on the side there, it would still be the quintessential feeling you got inside of Disneyland. Unfortunately, Walt Disney passed away in 1966, and with him, the dream of Epcot. The idea for this experimental prototype community of tomorrow could only be carried out by one man, Walt Disney, as someone to keep the train on the tracks and keep moving forward with this vision that may or may not have worked, but regardless, it wouldn't work anymore now that Walt Disney was gone. And now, at this point, it had become known to the public that Disney was the company buying up all this land near Orlando, and so Disney was stuck with all of this land, no leader, and the public breathing down their necks as to what they were going to do with this property. Was this going to be the second Disneyland? Were they buying up land for a massive new studio, or perhaps Disney he would try to go forward with Walt's vision of Epcot after all. In the end, it was the first one. But people were forgetting that the Disney company did have a figurehead. It did have someone with ties back to Walt, who seemed to be at his core an executive responsible with money and finances, but turned out to be something of a dreamer himself. In 1967, Roy, Walt's brother, held a press conference in Florida. They established the Reedy Creek Improvement District and, by extension, the plan for the Disney World project, now known as the Walt Disney World Resort in honor of Roy's late brother, was back on. Although Epcot wouldn't make its debut until a couple decades after, the plan for a second Disneyland and a resort around it was going to be realized, with Roy Disney spearheading both the financial side and the creative side of this brand new resort. This time, the Imagineers over at WED had a lot more room to work with, and now instead of only designing theme park attractions and lands, they were designing transportation systems, resort hotels, and recreational activities. It's almost like a mini city, or I guess it would be a Mickey city. Different classic Disneyland attractions would be brought over for the Magic Kingdom Park, like the Haunted Mansion. Because the Imagineers knew that Disney wanted 
to build a haunted mansion at Disney World as well as have it open at Disneyland, they essentially made two of every audio animatronic because the ride would exist on both coasts, albeit with some additions and cut scenes from the Disneyland mansion in Orlando. Other classic Disneyland rides like It's a Small World, The Jungle Cruise, and Peter Pan's Flight would also be present on opening day. Something else that had to be done absolutely flawlessly was the actual opening ceremonies themselves, because Disneyland had not gone flawlessly, for lack of a better term. They had gone horribly, and Roy was dedicated to making sure this opening ran as smooth as possible. And guess what? It, it actually did. Disney World was a massive success for everyone on the East Coast who hadn't been able to make it out to Disneyland. Now they had their own little piece of Disney magic that was over triple the size of Disneyland in Orlando. What was being advertised as the crown jewel of Walt Disney World though, beside the Magic Kingdom itself, was Disney's contemporary resort. This was sort of meant to take over what Epcot was going to be. A monorail, the transportation system of the future, would take you from the parking lot through the contemporary to the Magic Kingdom, and all of the appliances and rooms in the contemporary would be the most up-to-date technology that Disney had access to. The hotel rooms themselves were even assembled and furnished fully off-site and then slid into place to complete the full building. Good luck trying to get those out nowadays though, that, that's, it's impossible. You can't really pull those rooms out. They were slid in, but you, know, you can't really remove a hotel room from a building. Meanwhile, over on the other side of the Disney-created Seven Seas Lagoon was the Polynesian Village Resort. Meant both as an homage to Adventureland and to capitalize on the tiki craze that was overtaking the United States at that point. The resort would offer water skiing and luau's, and yes, you could even swim in the Seven Seas Lagoon. Would not recommend doing that these days. The rooms at the Polynesian, like at the Contemporary, were prefabricated off-site and then slid into place later. Although over time, some guests began to complain of a moldy smell emanating from their room, and when it was discovered that mold was growing in between the rooms, the space was filled in, which is why you can't remove them. The world-class Magnolia Golf Course had opened a few weeks before the park, and the Fort Wilderness Campground would open a few months later. It seemed that after all of his hard work, Roy's dream, his sort of post-mortem present to his baby brother had finally paid off. In his opening day dedication speech, Roy said, Everyone has heard of Ford cars, but have they all heard of Henry Ford who started it all? Walt Disney World is in memory of the man who started it all, so people will know his name as long as Walt Disney World is here. Lillian Disney, Walt's wife, said that she was sure Walt would have approved. And honestly, I can agree with her on that. The Magic Kingdom stands as a tribute to Disneyland and Walt Disney's original dream. Done in many ways that some would consider better than the original. Not me though, I am, I am not some people. It's good though, it's, it's amazing. The Magic Kingdom is indescribable. And so, after carrying out his little brother's last wish, completing his legacy and his project, Roy Disney passed away in December of 1971, less than three months after the opening. Since that day, Walt Disney World has opened three additional parks, Epcot modeled after a permanent World's Fair, Hollywood Studios meant to showcase the magic of movie making, and Animal Kingdom, an educational theme park meant to teach us the importance of conservation. But how do I fit into all of this, you're asking yourself? Well, in the year 2000, Little Dallin took his first trip to the Walt Disney World Resort. And, as he was only two years old at the time, the only thing he really cared about was seeing Buzz Lightyear in the flesh, finally. And after very, very cautiously saying hi to Minnie Mouse, his obsession began, and the rest, as they say, is history. Now I apologize if it's sounding a little windy out here, because we are on Bay Lake after all, but right across the water there, that little area where you can see the trees sort of go up and then down, this, that's Riles Island. This is what they call Riles Island. You can see a small boat docked there actually, if I can zoom in far enough. Now Riles Island has a much more popular, a much more... Yeah, I see it. A much more infamous name. That, ladies and gents, that is Discovery Island. Disney's abandoned precursor to Disney's Animal Kingdom. Sitting there, wasting away in the elements to this day. Now, there's a popular legend that when Walt Disney 
and his group of executives and Roy were flying out here to sort of survey land and where they wanted to build the Disney World Resort. They flew over Riles Island and Bay Lake and they thought to themselves, you know what? This is it. This is the spot. That's the legend. They flew over it in the plane that used to be at Hollywood Studios, the mouse. And Riles Island was Walt's tipping point to build the resort right here on the shores of Bay Lake. So if you think about it, everybody's at the Magic Kingdom right now, you know, going crazy, taking photos, buying out all the merchandise and scalping it online, but we are here as close as we can get without buying a boat to sort of where it all started. That's pretty cool. So I figured what better thing to do on the 50th anniversary of the Magic Kingdom and Walt Disney World Resort opening than ride some rides that were open 50 years ago when the park opened. And so we're going to do three main ones today, all right? The three big ones, the three ones that you think of when you think Disney World. The Haunted Mansion, okay, Peter Pan's Flight, and Tomorrowland Speedway. Yes, I'm being serious. I'm not joking. Why would I ever joke about the Tomorrowland Speedway? Let's go check it out. I'm walking right down the middle of Main Street, USA, 50 years to the day when people first walked down Main Street, USA. It's a bit busy, not too bad. Some cool 50th themed stuff, some news anchors. Not a JPEG to be seen, not yet. Don't worry, I'll find him. First things first on our agenda, the world of tomorrow. You know, I've seen differing opinions about this sign the new Tomorrowland sign. I think it's cool. I think it'd be cooler if Tomorrowland circled around its little podium there, if it like rotated around it. That'd be even cooler. It's very stagnant. No, the laugh floor was not open on opening day. Keep trying. And no, not even the People Mover. I know you, you may think but the People Mover actually opened a number of years after in July. People Mover did not open with the park, as tragic as that sounds. But you know what did open with the park? the Tomorrowland Speedway, baby! And if you're wondering why I'm yelling at you so loud, it's because I'm here at the Tomorrowland Speedway. And if you've ever been on Autopia or this ride, you know that they're not exactly quiet. This is the best ride here. Like, we all know that, right? because it's a lot shorter than Autopia. But it's a good way to get a look at Tron, the light cycle power run ride coming probably 2022 or 2023. It's right here behind this green fence behind me. I'll show it to you uh, when we get a better look. But there are some parts like Autopia, like this bridge we're about to go under, is very reminiscent of the Autopia. Goodyear sponsored the attractions when it first opened. And uh, they continue to, sp to supply the tires for the car to this day. They still give the, the, the Goodyear tires to the uh, Tomorrowland Speedway cars. It's undergone many re-theming. There were, it was once called the Tomorrowland Indy Speedway because it was tied to the Indianapolis 500. That's gone. Take a look at Tron, though. 
there she is. Coming along, I suppose. Coming along. Now, what's your favorite part about the Autopia slash uh, Speedway style attractions? Me, personally, <laughs> uh, getting whiplash whenever you hit the beam in the middle is something unmatched by any other Disney ride. I mean, unless you're talking like Matterhorn. But even then, it's really close. So, here we have it. An opening day Tomorrowland ride. A bit underwhelming. But it has its charm, you know? I think it does have its charm. A scenic route, I think they should lengthen the track. If they're gonna do anything, maybe lengthen the track. It's a bit short. I, I've been filming for about two minutes now and we're already almost to the end. So, um, let's cut through Fantasyland and go on another very popular, very exciting opening day attraction. My favorite, the Haunted Mansion. And of course, you can't forget the Tomorrowland Speedway bleachers, where you can watch your loved ones circle the track in about two minutes over and over again and cheer on the, the race cars, I guess. Ah, so here they are, the Fab 50 statues. I've heard a lot about you. Never really understood the hype, I guess, but it's pretty cool to look at. They're really well done. There were a couple at Orlando International Airport, and obviously some Alice in Wonderland themed ones right here by the teacups. So Fantasyland is it's all fine and dandy. There's Enchanted Tales with Belle that hasn't been open in forever. And the carousel that was actually an opening day attraction that's not originally from Walt Disney World. Here's a little trivia piece for you guys. Comment down below. Do you know where the carousel was originally before they relocated it here to the Magic Kingdom? A little puzzler for you. Let's go to the mansion. So watch this transition from like a fairy tale esque village. A subtle change of music, a subtle change of architecture. Next thing you know, you're in the poop covered streets. Of Liberty Square. Here we are. But more important than Liberty Square, we're following the pathway all the way up to the mansion. 13 minutes, the best wait time. This queue has always been oddly therapeutic for me, backing up against the rivers of America. You know, it's usually pretty quiet over here toward the end of the day. And if you can get the lighting right, it's a pretty cool experience. The interactive queue is really cool too, but that's actually been closed since the park's closed. So no interactive queue for us today, but Master Gracie's waiting for us. <laughs> that sign lied. I love everything about it. The embers dying in the fire below the portrait of Master Gracie. Into the stretching room. I am your host, your ghost host. <laughs> is this haunted room actually stretching? Or is it your imagination? <laughs> And consider this dismaying observation. This chamber has no windows and no doors. <laughs> Which offers you this chilling challenge to find a way out. <laughs> of course, there's always my way. <laughs> the real chills come later. Now, as they say, not So 
here on the walls, you may be able to spot some unused changing portraits. Yes, Jack the Ripper there. You probably can't see it, it's very dark in here. So fun fact, you're gonna get your photo taken here, don't worry. I have a lot of doom buggies in between me and the people in front of me and behind me, so I can talk to you guys on the mansion. It's a real ride along. Even Our though... library is well stocked with priceless first editions. Cancelled scene oh, that only Disney oh. World has. <laughs> Pretty neat. And marble busts of the greatest ghost It's a real life ride along narration with for the Haunted Mansion. I feel like I would give you guys a treat, even if you can't see they too much. Retired. I figured we'd all enjoy the Haunted Mansion together on 50 years from the day that it opened. Don't worry, the, 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 the lighting will get better. It's, all right! Paul Frey's okay! If the lighting will get better. The lighting will get better, I promise, as soon as the, the ride lightens up a little bit. Literally and figuratively. This hallway used to just be spider webs. It was terrible. Now we have my phone wallpaper, my desktop wallpaper, my shoes. Right here, the Haunted Mansion wallpaper. How many ghosts are here? I don't know. Tony Baxter will never tell me. Every room has wall to wall. Hi there, Phantom Five. I'm your biggest fan. One, two, three, four, five. I don't know any of your names by heart, but I'm your big fan, I promise. Hellhound, we all know who these, we know you guys, come on now. Now if you're a Haunted Mansion fan like I am, you'll notice that someone is missing from this scene. That's okay though, we still have the mummy. There he is. And whatever the, whatever that is, I don't like it. Name an attraction with a better exit view. Besides Flight of Passage, I'll wait. I won't wait, it's just, this is the best one. Unfortunately though, not everybody survived all 50 years. Not everyone did. Some of them are buried in a graveyard behind Haunted Mansion. There he is. Oh dear. A little quick side note while we walk through Liberty Square, did you guys ever notice, you folks, you fellas, that is the exact same mold of the Haunted Mansion weather vane at Disneyland. That's it, that's the same thing. I think that's pretty cool. A little piece of Disneyland's Haunted Mansion here in Walt Disney World. Again, Liberty Square, right? Watch the transition. How did I do that? Look, it's the golden cow, I mean the golden rooster. Columbia Harper House. All right, moving on. Hey, Mr. Schmied, or Speed, or whatever. 30 minutes. 30 minutes isn't too bad. Let's go 30 minutes. It's just 30 minutes. That's all it is. It's 30 minutes. Plus there's an interactive queue. I want you guys, I want you guys to see this interactive queue. Okay, get a load of this. Second star to the right. Straight on to the morning. The nursery of the darling children. But first, we have to first enter their home. So we walk through the outdoor, their backyard I suppose, in London and of course, Poor little Nana. You can hear the horses galloping around in the background. There they are, the darlings. And here we are in the nursery. Really, really cool cue. Little toy chest back there. Oh, Tinkerbell also, look. It's in there. It's in there, Tink. Open it up. Or not, that's fine. No, that's okay. Really, 
really, really cool stuff. And usually, during non-COVID times, I have no musical skill, but if I did, I would be playing these bells all day long. Really cool. Super, super cool projection work there, Disney. Impressive. Impressive indeed. Oh, the children nestled all snug in their bed. Peter Pan using his flash to light us to Neverland. I'm better with my rhymes when I'm not under pressure, all right, on an attraction that's timed, okay? Put your criticism in the comments, okay? I, I will accept comment criticism, but not any other kind of criticism. Here we have London. Not upgraded like Disneyland's. As you can see, the river doesn't move. But there's a, there's a, there's a special charm in that, I think of just the physical, you know, no projections. It's quaint, it's cute, it's dis it's fantasy land, you know? It's fantasy land. And then you do a swoop, kind of. They have swoops at Disneyland where you like, your boat swoops down. Not quite here though, you kind of have swoops. It's more just like a braking system though that is disguised as a swoop. No Neverland model, it's just a giant Neverland room. That's okay. You ready to hear not Captain Hook? Now that doesn't sound like Captain Hook at all. I don't know about you. Circle around. So this is, yes, this is all opening day, 1971, uh, along with Snow White and Mr. Toad. Lots of Disneyland dark rides that are still there at Disneyland. Nowadays, not so much. Is that Ariel? That's, that's, that's Ariel, right? Is that not Ariel? And then here on the left, of course, we have, um, we have, uh, yeah. All right, let's, uh, let's move on to the next scene as fast as we possibly can. See, here comes another, like, weird swoop. It's like a semi-swoop. Skull Rock with Maleficent's Raven. Now, this is a really cool use, right? Right? So you have the sail separating the two rooms, and you have the pirates below you, you know, threatening the children, Captain Hook and Peter Pan. But then, tick tock croc, right? You pass to the other side of the sail, and the pirates are all dead. It's genius. Big dust. He doesn't say it here. Just kind of stands there. Again. It's not Captain Hook. Help me, Mr. Sneeze, help me! Uh, but, you know, sure, it can be. And then some happily ever after. Now, I don't know about you, but I think there is one perfect way to end the night of the 50th anniversary of Walt Disney World Resort. You know what, that, you know what I think that is? If you said fireworks, you're right. Oh, Guys, look at this. Good evening, friends. Look around you. There is a special magic that flows through this land. A magic of fantasy. Swirling with pixie dust made more brilliant by the light that lives within you. It inspires us to wish upon stars, follow our hearts, and find our happily ever afters. Tonight, as we gather together under the spires of this majestic castle, our dreams ignite the magic to create a beacon
sometimes the world seems against you. The journey may leave a scar, but scars can heal and reveal just who you are. The people you love will change you. The things you have learned will guide you. And nothing on earth can silence the quiet voice still inside you. the 50th anniversary of Walt Disney World. We visited the contemporary, sort of where this all began, the Magic Kingdom, rode some opening day attractions, but if you were paying attention during that video, there were a few things that didn't quite line up, didn't quite make sense. And that's for next week. But until then, everybody, thank you all so much for watching, and 
I'll leave you with some final words on Walt Disney World. Disney has added and improved so much for the 50th anniversary, and I can respect that. Roy Disney said that Walt Disney World is a tribute to the philosophy and life of Walter Elias Disney, and the talents, the dedication, and the loyalty of the entire Disney organization that made Walt Disney's dream come true. May Walt Disney World bring joy and inspiration and new knowledge to all who come to this happy place, a magic kingdom where the young at heart of all ages can laugh and play and learn together. And I think Disney World still lives up to this goal. No matter the crazy decisions that Disney might make, or the weird changes they may make to your favorite attraction, or land, or even after they got rid of the Ohana menu and then brought it back after everyone pleaded with them to, as long as Walt Disney World lives up to these tenants, I can say I'm satisfied. And honestly, from what I experienced this weekend, it still does. And to prove how I feel about this to you, let me show you my raw first reaction to the points of light on Spaceship Earth at my favorite Walt Disney World Park, Epcot. Look at it though. Like, are you, come on. Come on. I love Epcot, man. I really, I really like Epcot. This could be the best Disney park ever. This is in the running. Better than Disneyland? I don't know. It's in the running, though. Are you, like, come on. Come on. That's the coolest thing I've ever seen. Hello everybody and thank you for tuning in to my 50th anniversary special for Walt Disney World. This is a very, very fun but tiring video to make, so please, 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 if you enjoyed it, leave a like and subscribe if you're new around here. I promise it really helps out the channel. And again, I apologize for the audio problems and the audio weirdness. I'm <laughs> syncing up my mic to make sure it sounds the best that it can, so please bear with me. But until then, you know, this is, this is what we got to work with, fellas. Please be sure to head over to my Patreon, and even just $1 a month gets you access to most of the perks. And Patreon supporters, I promise that the next video I'm working on will get uploaded to Patreon. They, they know what I'm talking about, don't worry about it. A great, big, massive thank you, and how you doing to all the people who I met this weekend. You are all amazing. I had so much fun talking to you and sharing my passion for Disney with you. I love sharing the passion, and this week was as good as any to just sort of, you know, get hamming up on the emotions and talk about Disney World. I, I love it so much, especially Epcot, and I cannot wait for the next 50. So, everybody, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I, I, I really, truly do hope you enjoyed it. And I will see you all in the next one. Goodbye.